Hey everyone, welcome back to Pro Stops Buying Stuff. Last week we did my empties video which was about how much product I had used up and finished to move out of my collection and reduce my inventory by. This week we are doing a declutter video. So if you missed my 2020 beauty rehab intro, I will link it up in the cards. What I'm doing this year is every time I use a product, I'm putting it into a box and then every so often I'm going to film one of these videos where I go through everything that I've used recently and talk about it with you and decide whether I am keeping it or not. So that's what today is, let's get on into the products. This is the selection of products that I've used since the last video. One thing that I'm just going to start with is this. So this is from Kiehl's and it's their Apothecary Preparations Serum. Now basically I'm decluttering this because it is breaking me out. I don't want to say too much about it because it is old um, it actually it's you get a personalised label when you make this so if you can see there that was made for me on the 14th of February 2017 I didn't open it um, you know I kept it completely sealed that products obviously only have so much of a shelf life even in their packaging and unopened so it may have just gone off it might not be breaking me out of its own accord but it is in a quite a rich squalene base if I remember correctly and my skin doesn't tend to like things that are too oily or too rich so yeah I'm gonna get rid of this so that's my one skincare product and then I'm also getting rid of from Lee Stafford and it's the Coco Loco Coconut Balm um, basically what you do is this is solid and it smells lovely it smells like coconuts but you take a little bit out and you melt it in your hands and it turns into an oil you then run that oil through your hair basically I've got hair oils that are in squirty tubes that are just a lot less messy and a lot less work and that's what I'm going to pick up every time so I've decided I'm just going to cut my losses and pass this on now those are the two products I'd kind of already put in here because I decided that I was decluttering them so let's now get on into everything else no decisions have been made here and we'll just assess things as we go. I'll do these palettes first since they're kind of right here. The first palette that I have used is the Urban Decay, um, this is Gwen Stefani, it's, this is actually the blush palette and I really really enjoy this palette so I'm definitely definitely keeping this. Then these are all eyeshadow palettes. The first one here is from Cargo Cosmetics, it's the Northern Lights palette. Some beautiful shades in there and really really lovely names which doesn't help because it definitely makes me more inclined to hold on to something if they've got nice names etc. So this is a really really beautiful palette but my issue with this palette I think is just basically that although I love and I did although is that although I love a lot of these shades I own a lot of these shades already in other palettes and I think like being in quarantine and having that time to really play with my makeup and really enjoying playing with it is just making me realise that I'm doing all these different things with different palettes and continuously coming out with the same things because I own the same things over and over again. Does that make sense? And because I, I keep a hold of all these things saying like I can get completely different looks with this one to this one and whatever else and it's you get to a point where you really have to admit that you actually can't because the products that are completely different to what else you own are, are generally the things you don't like as much because they're not because you bought them because they were different. Well, for me, um, when I say you, I really mean me. And then the things that I do really like, I tend to own a few times over. Um, and that's definitely the case with the shades in this palette. So I think I'm going to pass this palette on, which hurts because I really, really like it. But I own all these colours, so I'm going to pass it on. Next one, Naked 2. Do you know what? I think I'm going to pass this on as well. Um... I've considered decluttering this so many times and I always stop myself but I think it's time guys. I'm gonna pass this on. I'm sitting here looking at it and I'm quite like I'm considering pulling out a few shades Um, for example like I like that shade Foxy as a base colour but I have Naked Basics which has this in it or if not exactly this one that's similar. I also have the Naked, the fully matte naked palette, which I think this is in. I'm sure this is in one or other of those palettes. So basically, I have this. I really like Tease as well and Chopper, but no, I would rather actually pass on a fully intact palette to someone who can really enjoy it. So I'm going to pass this one on. It feels quite cutthroat. 
the Bam Nutude. I wanted this for so long before I got it. Um, and it's a really lovely palette. Realistically, again, I own all these colours elsewhere. I need to stop holding on to things that I own already, so I'm going to get rid of this one. So next up, and actually it's still in its box because it's one of my relatively newer things in my collection is the Too Faced Gingerbread Extra Spicy palette. Lauren and I actually did a palette bingo with this a few weeks ago. I really really like this palette although I do probably, I've gotten rid of those other palettes based on owning them all already and I probably do own these shades in other palettes but I do really enjoy just having them all together in one place and yeah I'm definitely I'm, st I'm still I'm holding on to this one. This one's definitely staying. And another one that's definitely staying, so this is actually what I've got in my eyes today. Lauren and I did a palette bingo earlier this morning. Um, that's how we're getting through quarantine. So this is ABH Subculture. It's one of my favourite palettes. I was actually almost a bit sad when we picked to do an ABH palette for palette bingo because I almost didn't want to waste my use of this palette on a palette bingo because I know I've got so much stuff that the chances of me actually working through everything and getting to use the things I am keeping again within this calendar year are relatively low. And I, I love this palette and I was like, I want to use this palette how I choose to use it. I don't want to like waste it on a palette that can go, not that it's a waste, but you know what I mean. And then I, that kind of, that was what spurred me on to make sure that I filmed this today whilst I was in that headspace because I want to use this palette again this year and I want to use this palette again more than I want to use this once and keep a hold of this to use that once again when I can use that I can get what I can do from this from something else so yeah I'm definitely keeping a hold of this palette this is exactly the sort of thing that I want in my collection and the way that I feel about this is how I want to feel about everything in my collection. Another cargo palette this one is the Shanghai Nights palette. Again, it's got some really, really beautiful shades in here. Um, this ginger one's particularly pretty, but nothing massively individual, so I'm going to pass this along. This Tarte palette is very old. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it, but again, it's just not that individual. I'm ready to part with it, so I'm going to pass this along, which hurts because I like this palette. But yeah, I mean, all the looks that I can achieve from this, I can achieve from other things you know and other palettes that are mixing these shades in with more exciting shades as well so I've managed to keep this thing with the shade names on it all, all this time because this palette is also very old I got this in Florida and it was at Christmas 2013 so we're saying goodbye I, I feel weird about getting rid of this because I felt so special owning this because that was before Tarte was available in the UK um, and I got it in Sephora and it was this whole set with loads of different bits and pieces in it that I was just so excited about because having Tarte products was such a like thing at that point. Everyone was obsessed with the Tarte blushes and you couldn't get them here and I just loved owning this. Um, but yeah, it's time, it's time to go. Okay, so the last palette that's here is this Alice in Wonderland one. So this was Lauren and I's first palette bingo actually. Um, so let's just take a look at this palette. It's one of those real collector's pieces. So it's got this that opens up here. It says, I'm not strange, weird, off, nor crazy. My reality is just different from yours. Which feels like one of those little kind of emo avatars that people used to have on MSN Messenger, but whatever. Um, and that, and then it opens up and it's got the butterfly in the inside, Mr. Alan Rickman I believe, and then it's got these colours. Now Lauren and I I think both basically admitted whilst we were having that palette bingo that we totally bought this palette because it is the Alice in Wonderland one. You can tell this is special because it's still in its box. I keep all my sort of collector's pieces in their boxes. Um, and because it is that sort of collector's piece I'm going to hold on to this for now. It's definitely in terms of the product one that I wouldn't have bought had it not been in this packaging and I'm very aware of that and I'm sort of trying to come to terms with that and figure out how I feel about that but I've not made that decision yet so I still want to hold on to this for now. So out of that I've kept four palettes and got rid of one two three four five palettes 
Oh, that was a good start, thanks. Right, so let's let's get on into this box of goodies. But I'm definitely keeping. Let me just pull these things out because I know that I'm definitely keeping them. These are quite interchangeable. I basically created the same makeup look two days in a row, but I really, really enjoyed it. So this is one of the hourglass blushes. This is in the shade Iridescent Flash. It's really, really pretty. You see that? It's so, so pretty. Um, and then the next day I basically did more or less, well not the same, but a similar makeup look using this MAC blush, which is called Fully Fuchsia. Definitely keeping both of those. And then one day I did this NARS eyeshadow in Callisto. Which is so pretty. I, re I don't think NARS make these anymore. These were the dual intensity eyeshadows. This one here is Dion. They look very similar in the pan, but you can see there is actually quite a difference between them. Um, so yeah, that was my makeup look one day to the next day. Definitely has similar vibes and I knew that when I did it, but I really liked both days of makeup using these, so I'm definitely keeping them. Now in terms of the lips that I used on both those days, I used the same lip pencil, which was this one from Colourpop. This is, this is called Notion. So that was the lip liner that I used. And one day I used the Notion liquid lipstick. Now I couldn't get this even but I think it was because of me rather than the lipstick and I did like the colour so I'm going to hold on to it for now. And the second day I used NYX from Colourpop. Similar but not the same. So I'm keeping a hold of everything that's on my hand here and I, and I will insert the pictures of the two makeup looks that I did one day after the other. If I've got pictures of me wearing products etc as I talk about them I will put them in. I don't actually take a lot of selfies overall to be honest. I'm not sure that I'll have any other than for this but I know I definitely took some for these days and I really like makeup so I will share the pictures with you. This is actually the lipstick that I'm wearing today. It's the NYX liquid lipstick. This is in the shade Vintage and it's very very pretty. Vintage is just such a perfect name for it because it is a very sort of sepia sort of beautiful vintagey shade. I'm going to keep a hold of this just now. I've got a few of these and I think there's some I'm ready to declutter because I think the formula has turned. Whether I bought this one later than I bought any of them or whatever, I don't know. But at the moment this formula is fine. I am kind of ex Do you know what? No, I'm gonna get rid of it. Just as I'm saying this. Basically what I'm saying is I'm expecting this formula to turn and I've still, I've got so many lipsticks that by the time I work through them all and come back to this one, it might have turned by then. So, I'd be better passing this on so that someone can use it before it turns because I'd say the other ones that I've got of these I've noticed getting kind of patchy or drying my lips out or whatever which this hasn't but it probably will by the time I work through all my other lipsticks and get back round to it so I'm gonna pass this on actually even though it's such a lovely colour. Oh it might be kind of similar I'm going to keep this um again this is one of those slightly sort of collector's pieces of makeup. This is from the MAC Aladdin collection. It's the lipsticks in the shade Raja. And actually, well, they're not really the same, but there's a vibe there, if you see what I'm saying, between these two. Um, and I'm definitely, definitely keeping this. So, they're, they're not the same. Let's. I've, I was going to try and tell myself that these were the same, but they, they're not. So, let's just move on. Um the other lipsticks here. I'm keeping both of these as well actually. I know straight away from looking at them. So the first one is MAC Social which is just one of my favourite bright orange lipsticks and the other one is Dubonny which I actually got and I wore this the day that we did the palette bingo with the Alice in Wonderland because I actually got this Dubonny shade because when Scottish Ballet did their production of Alice in Wonderland, the principal dancer who was playing Alice. This is the lipstick that she wore um, and I ran out and bought it because of that. So it's got very fond memories for me and it's also a beautiful shade. So keeping these three, getting rid of that one. I've got this from Benefit, um, Dandelion Shy Beam, which I got because I thought it would be good for doing kind of highlighting when I didn't want like a really sort of bright highlighter. See how that kind of just 
melds into the skin. But the problem for me is that this does just basically meld into the skin um, because I am so pale that this is not particularly highlighting in me. So yeah, I think I'm just going to pass this on actually. I think it's, it would be really pretty on the right person but it's just not it's not pale enough for me basically so yeah we'll pass that on. Oh MAC black line eyeliner I'm wearing that today and I'm definitely keeping that. This is such a pretty eyeliner. You guys can see so it's like really shimmery and it's got green and black and it kind of tilts between them all so definitely keeping that. I have got this eyeshadow from Kat Von D Beauty, or KVD Beauty, it's now Kat, not Kat Von D anymore. This is in the shade Iggy, and I wanted this for so long before I bought it. And again, I got this before you could get Kat Von D in the UK, so I ordered it from Sephora back in the day when Sephora used to ship to the UK. That is what that looks like. And it's really, really pretty, but I think it's just a bit too bright for me. It's not for me, I don't think. As much as I absolutely love green, it's one of the few colours that I definitely, you know, I, I do wear. I like quite a murky green, I think, on myself. Um, I think my, I don't know, I can't quite explain it, but when I wore this and I was really looking at it and assessing it and I remember doing that and I just came to the conclusion it was too bright for me and it just, something just didn't work. Even though I love the formula and I love the colour, when I look at it there, and look at that as a colour. I think it's absolutely beautiful but the day that I wore this I just didn't think it was beautiful on me so I'm gonna pass that along. I actually wore that no lid a day that I wore this in my crease and um, this is from RMS Beauty and it's the Tobacco Road TR94. I think like the way that RMS work is that they've got four shades called Tobacco Road and they're all TR something so this is TR94. It's a really beautiful sort of olive greeny brown colour which I really really like and it these two just they didn't really work together as a cohesive eye look um either which I suppose was maybe part of the issue but I feel like this kind of shade does a lot more for my eye colour than this kind of shade so I'm going to keep a hold of this one. So I've got another Kat Von D one here this is in the shade Dose. This is really pretty I'm definitely keeping this. Um, it's just this beautiful copper colour. Absolutely stunning. Love that shade. Definitely, definitely keeping that one. And I've got this Chanel one here which is called Rouge Noir. So this was a limited edition. It was part of the Rouge Noir collection. Now Rouge Noir is such an iconic Chanel colour for me um, as a lipstick. But if I'm honest this eyeshadow is just not not that great. It's actually swatched quite well but it's quite patchy on the eye. Chanel have also really annoyed me because when John Lewis announced that it was shutting itself first during this quarantine the Chanel staff were told they were going to have to go work in Debenhams and House of Fraser um, which I just thought was absolutely ridiculous until thankfully Debenhams and House of Fraser also both shut which has just put me off Chanel as a brand at the moment so I've kind of if that's kind of pushing me over in a way that I might have kept this before because Rouge Noir is such an iconic like I just remember wanting that shade and it was such if anyone ever read the Gossip Girl books it was like the sort of go-to shade in those books for like a lot of the characters for a big night out or whatever and I bought it and I absolutely loved it. I've used up an entire Rouge Noir lipstick before and I absolutely love the lipstick and I will always buy it but I think I'd been given this eyeshadow a free pass because of the name for so long. A, I want to reduce my collection, but B, that kind of ridiculousness of the way Chanel were treating their staff going into this quarantine period has just kind of made me make my peace with, with getting rid of this. I used these three products, which is a blush, eyeshadow and highlighter. So this is from the Too Faced um, Gingerbread House Party palette and I'm going to keep them. Again, that's relatively new into my collection. Um, another relatively new product is this, my, oh, Meg, I love her so much. So this is from the Disney Pin Night Masquerade collection from Colourpop. Um, and this is the Meg highlighter and it's called Big Tough Girl. And it's this lovely sort of iridescent purpley colour, which goes quite nicely with very sort of plummy blushes. So... 
I'm definitely, definitely keeping that. I just, I love that Meg actually got some merch for once. Always here for that. Um, but also it is a, a really, really lovely product as well. So we're keeping that. Little mini eyeshadow palette there from Dior. Well, not a mini eyeshadow palette, but a Dior Quint, not a full palette is really what I mean. Um, and it's these lovely kind of mauve purpley tones with this pretty gold in the middle. Which is just... That's it layered over that highlighter and it's ugh, so pretty. Um, so definitely keeping that. So that I'd obviously use this right at the start because it was at the bottom rather than being in the side with the other the palettes that wouldn't fit in this box by the time it came to filming this. The Colourpop um, Midnight Masquerade palette. I mean this palette is just super super pretty and I'm definitely definitely keeping that. It's very new to my collection and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I think Lauren and I are going to do a palette bingo with it, so look out for that on my Instagram. I've got an eyeshadow here from Estee Lauder. This is the shade Hot Cinnamon Shimmer. Now, I just did like a one shade all over the eye look with this. This is one of these shades that I feel like I should declutter because it's kind of basic and I definitely will own this somewhere else, but I haven't found an exact dupe for it. Actually, what happened was I used this and then I thought that Tobacco Road shade in my head it was more of a brown than it was a sort of olive and I used that the next day deliberately to compare the two um, but they are obviously completely different um, but I'm going to keep a hold of this just now which I'm, I'm quite surprised about because I'm like I'm sure I probably own this and I probably need to spend the time proving that I own it before I'll be okay with getting rid of it um, but at the moment I just don't have that time to spend I want to keep using stuff I want to keep rotating stuff and find other things that are very obvious declutters before kind of really getting into seeing where all the dupes lie within my collection so at the moment we're keeping a hold of this. I've got MAC something special blush so this is a cream blush um, and it's this really pretty sort of peachy shade it's very very natural um, and I'm definitely keeping a hold of that for now. Another peachy blush that I'm going to keep hold of is Milani Luminoso, which was again such a cult product for such a long time, but very well deservedly so. It's such a pretty, pretty colour. Um, so I'm definitely keeping that at the moment. Uh, another MAC blush here, this is in the shade Tenderling, and this is just one of my favourite blushes. It's ideal for days when you've got quite a strong eye and a strong lip and you just need life in your cheeks but you don't want another colour competing. Um, Tenderling is perfect for that so that's going nowhere. Get another one of those Chanel eyeshadows. Oh this is the shade Phantasme which is shade number 81 um, which you know is a little bit like Phantasmic from Florida which is my favourite of the Disney nighttime shows if anyone's particularly interested. But yeah, if you guys can see that, it's a really, really pretty sort of iridescent colour. So lovely. Um, so I'm definitely, definitely, definitely keeping that one for now. This is um, the Longcomb Art Liner. I'm definitely keeping hold of this. I'm not very good at liquid liner, but this one I find kind of one of the easiest to use. I don't have very steady hands, which is, I think, part of it. Um, and I've also got hooded lids, but I find like this particular whether it's shape or size I don't really know I don't really know what it is but I do quite like this one it's not the blackest of blacks but I'm quite happy with it so I'm going to keep a hold of it for now I've got a MAC lipstick here oh Ruby Woo definitely definitely keep we're definitely keeping Ruby Woo rather an iconic shade APH Ashton let me swatch this let me let it dry as well actually um we'll look at something else in the meantime nars live i feel like did i use this on camera i think i did i think i used this in my get ready with me um but yes definitely keeping this lovely shade you know how i like a, a deep dramatic lip um another lipstick here i'm definitely keeping this this is savannah from diego del palma and this is a beautiful sort of orangey shade. It's got a sort of gingerbread -y tone to it, but it's definitely more orange than brown. Um, so I really, really like that. And I'm also, I'm going to keep this, which is ABH Ashton. I just wanted it to dry down to make sure I was remembering it correctly. Um, quite a specific kind of 
shade, not an everyday one for me. It's one that I really do need to be sort of planning all my makeup around this as a lip if I'm using it, but I do like it, so I'm going to keep it for now. I'm sure you will not be surprised to know that I will be keeping this. So this is the NARS Exposed Cheek Palette. I bought this in Florida in March last year and it's just one of my favourite purchases. So good for travelling. You've got your highlighter. When you want a kind of neutral cheek, you've got that. You've got something that's more of a bright peach. You've got pink, plum. I'm really, I think this is such a great palette. So I'm definitely, definitely keeping a hold of this. Three more bits from the Disney Colourpop collection that I'm all which I'm keeping. Um, so I've got the Belle blush here, which is a really, really pretty sort of neutral one. And that one is called Enchanted Mirror. Then the Cinderella Highlight, which is just so beautiful. Um, again, definitely keeping that and it's called Horse and Carriage. And then Tiana, I just, I absolutely love this whole collection, particularly because it did include the likes of Meg Tiana and Esmeralda who never, never get merch. And I know this is a makeup video and not a Disney merch video, but if anyone's watching from Disney merchandise for some weird reason, more Meg please, more Tiana, more Esmeralda. That's what we want. Um, but yeah, this one is called Kissing a Frog. And again, it's quite a nice neutral blush. So I'm keeping them. Then underneath that, I've got this, which is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette, um, this was the Dark Magic. Do you know, I feel like I need to use this again. I think I'm going to keep this for now, but I think this could be on the shopping block. I might do like a palette a week video with this or something and really test it out. Because I f there's part of me that thinks I could get rid of this and the other part of me is not quite willing to yet. So I think this needs further testing. So I'm going to keep it for now, but I think this could be on the chopping block. Let me know if you'd want to see like a full video of me using this every day for a week and making a decision about it. I'm filming a video like that just now with another palette that I kind of thought I wanted to declutter but wasn't sure about and I think it's been really helpful for me to do that. Um, so yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that with this. So this is what we're down to in the box. We're near the end. Uh, another part of that Disney collection actually. This is the Prince Naveen lipstick which is so pretty. Terracotta brick shade. So that's that one there. Um, so definitely, definitely keeping that. No questions. KVD Beauty in the shade Hawkwind. Put that to the side whilst we're letting the rest of it dry down. Okay, so this is the end of the box. It's just a bunch of lip liners now. NARS. NARS. Definitely keeping both of them. Colourpop Love Bug, which I will definitely be keeping. That is such a good shade. They look very similar, these three, and I do appreciate that, but it means they go with a lot, so yeah, love that. MAC High Energy, this is what I think I wear with Lady Danger, which I realise is not here, but I must have worn it with Ruby Woo. So that's really nice bright red. Then I've got MAC Cherry, which is a sort of pinky red. In fact, you know, I would have worn that with Ruby Woo, I would have worn that with Social, keeping both of them. Then Gosh Flirty Orange, and I wore this with the Diego Del Palma lipstick, and I'm going to keep that. I think that's a really lovely one for summer. I'm going to keep all these lip liners, actually. Um, KVD Beauty Hawkwind, which is quite a nice deeper one, and MAC Night Moth which I must have worn with Liv. So those are the lip liners that I've used and I'm going to keep all of them. That is Hawkwind now that it's dried down. Do you know what, again, I like that as a colour when I sit and look at it here, but I don't think I like it on me. When I got this, my hair was still blonde and I think when I had blonde hair, I could carry off cool tones a bit better, whereas I think now, because my hair is red and my eyes are brown, I think cool tones clash with my complexion a little bit so I'm going to get rid of this one. So this is what we're declustering. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 items. That's doing okay. I know we've definitely kept a lot more than we've got rid of but, but yeah 12 things I think is good and I'm pleased that I've got five palettes knocked out because I feel like my eyeshadow palettes are I need to seriously get moving and get rid of some of them because I've got so many I couldn't even do a palette a week for a year and use them all and that was my kind of 
goal for next year was that I would like to get down to only having 52 eyeshadow palettes so I feel like that's that's nice that I've got five eyeshadow palettes in there that we can cross off maybe not nice nice probably isn't the word but encouraging encouraging that we've got rid of them now we've got one product that I'm actually what I'm going to do is put this back into my storage I'm not going to put this away so I'm not counting this as a saved product yet this is an on the shelf and then this is the pile of stuff we have saved. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve items there. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 44. So this is the keep pile, we've got 44 items that we've saved, we've got one that we're putting back in to give for further consideration, and 12 that we are getting rid of. So that's okay. I'm not saying it's the best declutter in the world, but I'm happy to get rid of 12. I know that I want to use all of them again, I'm sure about keeping all of them, and we've got one for further consideration. So I don't think that's, that's a bad outcome. So thank you very much for watching this, I hope you've enjoyed doing so. Um, and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye!